Hi everyone. Hi guys. You know which? So Falconist. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're in this uh, beautiful archaeological museum. Of Lycian history. Of Lycian history. Uh, Lycians have, uh, is one of the civilizations that was around 2,500 years ago. <laughs> Um, they're connected to the ancient Greeks and they've done uh, magnificent uh, work. They left a lot of monuments in the area of the Mediterranean and we're in one of the museum that shows their, uh, their craft. And today we're going to talk about um, giving offerings. So, Inarich, what can you tell us about offerings in rituals, let's say for guardian demons? People ask always questions about giving offerings to guardian demons and they don't know what to uh, offer or how. Uh, do you have anything to say on that if you can, uh, you know, like uh, just share with us your experience? So I think the wisdom. first thing that you should offer is something that you would personally like to receive as an offering. So imagine you are being a demon or you being a goddess or you being a god, what it would be that you would be honored to receive. Because I've seen many people that do offerings of the most like random things like piece of their meal or the towers of their meal or for example like random stick from outside. Mm -hmm. So imagine you being a god, would you be like extremely fascinated <laughs> by receiving a stick? So I think the things that get you that get you like feel something that you're special. That the things that you should offer to the gods or deities or the demons that you're working with. Especially if you are not just worshiping them, if you're asking them for help or for a favor. So give something in return. There is always an exchange of energy going on in every dimension and every realm. So yeah. they give you the energy, so you have to give something in return. So be creative, that's what I can say. Be unusual, spend time, put a lot of thoughts in the things that you like, in the objects that you're buying for them or creating for them. Some things that you made yourself, like an art or an interesting objects that you can create yourself, like whatever it is your hobby, you can actually create something for your demon and put it on the altar. And also, if you don't have anything that you can do yourself, if you don't have money to buy something and there's nothing special that you can find in the place where you live, I would say, your heart, like your mind, your energy, you can also offer it, you can give it to it. Like, you know, these gods and deities, demons, they've been worshipped because they wanted the devotion. So if you can give this devotion, if you can give your energy attention to them, that would be enough as well. So, so you're saying that basically it could be anything of value that the person uh, uh, prefers it could be like a, but it, it, it depends on the preference of the person or the pref or what the person feels the demon or the deity would like I think which one is it which it's the you know when you when you do a gift for someone it's usually you give something that you would want to receive yes so yeah. this is the easiest way to do an offering also if you work with pendulum tarot cards or anything, you can ask a question for your demon, for your deity, what they want to receive as an offering. So they actually can tell you what they need, that, if they need something. That's an amazing idea, actually. Yeah. And I would say altar is your sacred space. Altar is a space that's supposed to make you feel like peaceful, calm, and it's supposed to give you this source of empowerment. So the moment you sit down in front of the altar, you're supposed to feel that the normal world no longer exist, that you shifted somewhere, somewhere beautiful, somewhere sacred, somewhere special, somewhere divine. So this is your heaven and hell. So imagine that you're looking at your altar. So what, what should be there in order for you to feel that you're no longer on earth? So if, for example, you would put there like some kind of drink that you have every day or like the pen that you use at work, you still, your mind's still gonna be there and thinking, oh, I'm still on earth. So on your altar supposed to be pieces that you don't use daily, that you don't put like energy of this routine, like something everyday routine. Special, something special. Something so special, yeah. something obscure, something that you can even take with you. Yeah. So make sure your altar is as sacred as you can make it. Yeah. As it's like, it's like so amazing that the She's, moment you're there, 
it feels that you no longer on earth make, make it feel like a different dimension altogether mm -hmm. something divine as you said earlier yes. and um and is there a difference between giving offerings to let's say a guardian demon or a guardian spirit or an ancestor or or is it all you follow the same um rule or um, i would say not rule or like follow basically the same intuition what do you think these uh these spirits would like or is there a difference for each type of spirit there, i think there is a huge difference because even if you talk about ancestors so the ones used to live on earth as humans yeah so for them uh you know many traditions like all over the world like when they do offerings for ancestors first they offer their favorite drink their favorite food maybe their favorite book human flowers, related like something human, human related, something yeah. that you used to love in this realm and then you would crave or you would want to see it's like it's very nice when you bring something because this is what this was if you know your ancestor and you know what they loved when you bring it it's like a show in that you remember them mm -hmm. like you're giving so much attention of remembering what they used to like when they were alive so when when offering something to your ancestors make sure it's like very personal like to them yes. and they might not care about like ancient relic because they never were into art or never visited the museum but they might go like crazy when they see like the favorite like drink on your altar or favorite like i don't know bread or something and when it comes to gods because we don't know what they liked but i would always recommend to go back in history and like do research on ancient temples like for example if it's a temple of artemis like do you research what people used to do as an offering mm -hmm. and go to some museums and see the exhibitions dedicated to artemis like what she was into like if you see she always used to wear like a lot of beautiful jewelry like dress like head pieces yeah. so it means you should offer something beautiful yeah some some nice piece of jewelry something valuable too like gold or silver or something that's yeah. not just like something cheap or something like that because you want to honor this goddess or this mm -hmm. deity, right? Yes, so for example, in Ares, the god of war, he was into war, so I don't think he would be into <laughs> receiving flowers yeah. at his altar. So that's, that's make, true. make sure you uh, yeah. like offer some kind of relics that has connection with war, like war pieces or like maybe a knife, like sword, mm -hmm. something, something like that. So it helps you to do the research about the deity, like make personal connection. And they will always, like, they always give you answers. Like the moment you start researching, they're going to give you answers. So they want, like, the inspiration going to come. Wow, this is amazing, amazing wisdom and knowledge and information that that's actually hard to find. Thank you very much for sharing uh, this knowledge with us. And You're can you tell us where are you right now? Where where is this beautiful space that we can see? Can you talk about it a so little bit? In the witch and self alchemist right now. So we're actually in the Lumba dedicated Exantas. It was one of the biggest Asian cities in the ancient times, like now they Turkey. Mm -hmm. And it was occupied by many different <laughs> invaders like uh, Romans, Greeks, Greeks, Persians, Ottoman Empire, like yeah. everyone. And we are among like the relics that would were brought from the Xanthus and put in this museum. And it's like such a pleasure always to be like surrounded by the relics. Yeah. And I think even even we got inspired by the question of the offerings because majority of these relics were from the temples. Mm -hmm. And the temples of Artemis, like uh, Asians were into the Artemis so much. It was like the one of the biggest cults. Yes. So we saw so many artifacts like talking about about the worship in the goddess. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also Apollo. Apollo was like very prominent in Apollo, this area. Yeah. They call him Apollon, yeah. Apollon. Yeah. <laughs> Apollo in English. Apollo in English. <laughs> yeah. In ancient language. But yeah, this uh, this is this is uh, an amazing civilization that existed, and you, you you're right. It's always feels amazing to be surrounded by these artifacts. As you can see, we're surrounded. I don't know if you can see them, but um, like uh, it makes you feel this kind of different energy. So, Seth, I actually have a question for you. So, probably a lot of people watching your channel, they actually want to know what do you personally offer to your demons or deities that you're working with? <laughs> so, for me, for offerings, it's usually um, comes in the form of energy using my sigils. Mm -hmm. I, I don't connect with giving physical things. I don't connect with giving something physical mm -hmm. from Earth. So when I do a ritual, 
I would make a sigil because that's what I'm good at. Uh, I would make some like otherworldly sigil, something unbelievably beautiful. And I would put my energy of whatever I desire on that sigil with the intention. And then that would be my offering to that specific deity or, or entity. And especially my guardian demons who I who are always protecting me. And for me, it's more connects with energy, not physicality. Yes. Yeah, but the sigils are awesome. Like whenever I do use them, they always feel like so special. So much Thank, you. Thank you. Thank so you. Yeah. That's, that's a good offering, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is it. So we're in this beautiful archaeological museum. Ina, which shared with us some amazing knowledge and wisdom about offerings. And um, I hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for watching. Thank you for watching. And, uh, Maybe let us know in the comments what kind of offerings do you do for your deities, for your demons. Absolutely. Very like, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Write it down in the comment section. Mm -hmm. We've been, we're curious to know. And we will see you in the next museum. Museum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>